Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. Now in this episode I am going to discuss this notion that GoTo is considered evil and that we should never use it. And I'm going to try to address this by illustrating a few points and just so you know I am not going to ultimately come to the conclusion that you should use GoTo but I will show you that GoTo's are everywhere. So let's take this function that can sum up the values from 1 to 100 or whatever. And this is a very interesting example, in my opinion, because of what Clang is actually able to do in optimizing it. Now I'm putting in this code here saying if i is equal to 0 to continue, and I'm doing that simply for the case of um, I just need to add this extra bit of code here with a continue in it and not overcomplicate the assembly output. And so I'm skipping the zeroth case, which is meaningless because if you add zero to the sum, you're still just going to get the sum again. But I need it for this example. We are summing the values of zero to num and skipping over zero. So we're summing the values of one to num and we're doing a less than or equal here. So we would expect it to return say 50, 50 if we summed the values one to a hundred. It's kind of a classic um, example here. So there we go, we're getting the value 5050 returned, and I'm actually going to change the version of Cling that I'm using real quick to the absolute latest trunk. So the first thing that I'd like to point out is that continue is defined in terms of go to. So we're going to switch over to our documentation for the C++ standard, and I'm looking at the draft standard for C++ 17, but I promise this does not actually change anything here. So we can see that if you have a continue statement, it is equivalent to doing a go to from inside the body, wherever you call continue, to a jump that is outside of the main part of the body called contin colon, so that's a label. So this would look like this. And now you're going to notice that we're getting a build error, and that's because you can't jump to nothing. So I need to add an empty statement here. And you can do the equivalent of a no-op in C++ with simply a semicolon. And we're getting the same return value that we were. We're still getting 50-50. The assembly still looks the same. And for the sake of consistency, I'm going to format this slightly differently. So there we go. Now, the next thing that's interesting to note is that for loops are actually defined in terms of while. So if we go to the documentation on the for statement, we will see that it is the equivalent of doing this while statement here. So we put the init condition inside of our scope, and then while the condition is true, then we do our statement and our expression. The expression in this case is r plus plus i. So let's go ahead and put this here. So that's our initial statement. This becomes a while our i is less than or equal to num. And then we need to put our final statement here. And we no longer need our no op. And we need to close our outer scope and get our formatting all correct. And there you go. We are still generating the exact same assembly, and we still have our go to, and we have converted our for into a while. Now it gets a little bit more interesting, because in the standard, the while statement is actually defined in terms of a go to. So you have the label that is at the start of the statement, you have the thing that you're doing, the if condition, and then the go to. So let's see if we can continue to rearrange this and still get code that compiles correctly. There we go. So now our 
code is still generating the exact same assembly. We're still getting the same result of 50-50 out from the compiler. And we have go-tos everywhere. So just so you know, all of these constructs that we're used to in C++ and C, really, are basically all defined in terms of go-to. And it gets even worse if you look at things like switch statements. So go-tos are everywhere. There's nothing we can do about it. And if you are curious at all as to why I have this i equals equals zero, and let's say just hypothetically that we actually wanted to skip the first value instead of the zeroth value, and we change this to a one, we get something very different indeed from our compiler, where it is now doing all kinds of SSE instructions to try to sum up these values for us. And uh, it gets a little crazy. Now, I'm surprised that the compiler is still able to fold it all at compile time and just give us 5049 as the result back since I skipped the value one. But um, yeah, it generates considerably more code. And this is not really any different between um, GCC and Clang in this point. And I will show that with the latest version of GCC we are getting um, similar kind of SSE instructions happening here. And I guess also interesting to point out is if I change this back to zero, Clang is uh, much better at optimizing this kind of thing. It's a pattern that it looks for where it's summing all of the values in a range. And GCC generates the SSE style code regardless instead of the simpler code. But they are both able to give us the final result at compile time. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.